Hello everyone, how are you? What a beautiful day it is today. I'm coming on here a few minutes early and don't get nervous, I'm not gonna start without you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everyone has what they need. So you wanna make sure that you have a canvas that's either eight by 10 or nine by 12 or a piece of paper, like any white piece of paper is fine. That's about the same size as an eight by 10 canvas. That's what I'm gonna be using today is an eight by 10 canvas. If yours is a little bit bigger, that's fine. If you don't have a canvas, you can still participate today. Just use a white piece of paper, okay? You wanna have a pencil and get a really good eraser. I don't recommend using the erasers on the back of the pencils. They don't work that great. They kind of make a mess sometimes. So if you have the kind of eraser that you can put on the back of your pencil or a separate one, grab that too, okay? So for now, that's all you're gonna need is a canvas, a piece of paper, or a pencil, and a really good eraser, okay? We'll go over all the other supplies later. So while you're waiting, we need to add um, my face. We're gonna make a shape that kind of looks like a heart. So I posted this a few minutes ago, but if you didn't see it, that's okay. You can do it now. So you wanna make the top of my face look almost like a heart. And then the bottom, instead of being pointy like a heart, you're gonna make it round, like my chin, okay? And you wanna make sure that you don't go any lower than this. You wanna make sure you leave enough room for my body, okay? So you wanna keep this face shape a little bit higher than the middle, so you can see how much room I have on top, and you can see how much room I have on the bottom. So I'm gonna give everyone a couple of minutes to draw the face shape. Again, the top looks like a heart. It's nice and big. And I'm using an eight by 10 canvas. You can use paper. So start by doing the top of the face really big, like a heart. And then when you come down to the bottom, instead of making this pointy, like a regular heart, you're gonna make it rounded like my chin, okay? So I know some of you just tuned in. If you don't have this shape yet, I'm gonna give everyone an opportunity to do this. If you've already done it, just please be patient. I know you can until everyone catches up because we don't want anyone to fall behind. So, how's everyone been doing? I hope you went outside and played for a little while because it's a beautiful day. Everyone needs to get fresh air. So right now, I'm not in Arendelle or the North Woods, as you can see, there's a television in the background playing Frozen 2, my new movie. How many of you have seen Frozen 2? Comment below if you've seen the new movie. I'm really thirsty today. And oh my goodness, look, my straw matches my dress. This is my traveling outfit, but I didn't want to put my jacket on because I'm indoors and it's way too hot wearing a jacket. So this is just my dress from my traveling outfit from the new movie. And Anna got me this beautiful snowflake necklace. Don't you love it? It's so sparkly. So, oh, somebody said yes. I'm assuming that's to watching Frozen 2. If you have not watched Frozen 2, you can get it in the store. Um, I don't recommend you go to the store right now unless you really need to. But if you have Disney Plus, it's on Disney Plus right now. And you can watch it on there as many times as you'd like. And make sure you memorize all the songs. Oh, thank you, Nora. You're so sweet. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you enjoy this little painting that we're going to make. Okay. So once again, I want everyone to make a big heart shape on the top. And then instead of being pointy, make sure that the bottom of the, the uh, chin area is round not pointy, okay? Because I don't have a pointy chin, do I? See, it's nice and round. So we're gonna get started. If you tuned in late, you can try to catch up. If you don't wanna catch up, then what you can do is just wait until we're all done filming this. And then at the end, in my group, you can just go under the photo section and all the videos that we do from now on will be saved in there, okay? So we're gonna continue. Now I'm gonna do everything in marker but you're gonna do everything in pencil, okay? And there's gonna be a lot of erasing, so 
just press very lightly, okay, in case you do make a mistake, especially if you're doing it on a canvas, because as you can see, right, there it is, right here, I started off by doing that snowman that was in the picture, and I didn't like how it came out, so I'm going to change my snowman, because it's not really Olaf, I'm going to change that to a snowflake instead. So, everyone grab your pencils and your erasers, and you're only going to copy what I do in marker, okay? So, I'm going to back up the camera just a little bit so you can see. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to keep it closer. Perfect. So, we're going to start with my nose, and we're going to give me a really cute little tiny nose in the middle of my face. Okay? So, right in the middle of my face, you're going to make a tiny little curve for my nose. So right here, we're just starting with my nose. There we go. And the eyes look really pretty. We're going to give me some eyelashes and eyeliner, and we're going to give me some purple eyeshadow. It's going to look really cool. So we're starting with the nose. And we're going to do the eyes. You want to make the eyes nice and big. So I'm going to put this down and I'll turn it around. So wait for me, okay? So if anyone tuned in late, instead of rushing to catch up, you can just wait till we're done. And then we're going to post this in the group under photos. And I'll explain that at the end again, okay? So don't worry. You'll be able to do this anytime you want if you miss it. So we're going to start off with two big circles. See the circles that I did in black? Can you see those? Only do those for now, and then you're going to wait till I do the next one, okay? So, so far we've only done the shape of my face, little tiny nose in the middle, and two big circles for the eyes. If you don't have a canvas or paint, you can always do it on a piece of paper with crayons or markers. You can actually use acrylic paint on paper, too. I've seen people do it. It works really good. All right, so now we're going to do some more on the eyes. So we're going to make two big circles inside of the eyes. So I'll turn that around so you can see. So inside of the eyes, make two big circles, but don't color them in, okay? So don't color in the circles. Just draw them. Now we're going to draw the um, eye shape a little bit different than what you're used to, but if you follow along, I promise it's really, really easy. So we're going to start by doing this little curve that's on top of the circle. If you look closely, it's not eyebrows. It's like kind of like eyeliner. So you want this curvy line that looks like a big eyebrow to touch the top of your circle. And then we're going to make it thicker. So let me trace mine. And then I'll explain, okay? I'm going to do both sides. Okay. Okay. So before you draw anything, just listen, okay? So it looks like two big eyebrows, but they're touching the top of my circle, and it sticks out a little bit on this side, and it sticks out on this side. So you want to make sure that these curvy eyebrow shapes stick out both sides. They're not touching anything. See how they're not touching? But they need to touch the top of the circle, though. Very important that it touches just the top of the circle, and it sticks out on both sides. So do that to both eyes, okay? And then we're going to go back and we're going to make it a little bit thicker. So I don't know if you can see. Oh, you can. Can you see that line right there? That's eyeliner. And that's kind of what we're going to do. So now that you've done those lines on top, we're going to go back and I'm going to make them a little thicker. Okay, so all I did was trace over the line that I already drew. I just made them a little bit thicker. And then you're going to do this in black marker too afterwards, so it'll look like mine. It'll look a lot better when it's black. So just make those lines thicker. So it kind of looks like you put eyebrows on top of my eyeballs. It looks funny right now, but it'll look good when we're done. Okay. So when you're done thickening up those curvy lines, we're going to add eyelashes, but you want to make sure that the eyelashes go on the sides and not on the top. 
So I'm going to add eyelashes and you can make them as long as you'd like. So I added three eyelashes on the sides only on both eyes. I can see a little pencil that I didn't trace perfectly over my nose. Let's see if I can erase that. There you go. That's better. So let's go over what we've done so far. I don't want anyone to fall behind. So we started by doing the face shape. The top looks like a heart. And then at the bottom, instead of it being pointy like a heart, we made it nice and round like a chin. Then we found the middle of our, our face and we added a little nose. We made a big circle, two big circles. And we made two more big circles in the middle. And then we did a curvy line that looks like an eyebrow, but it's not an eyebrow right on top of our circle it needs to touch and then we made it a little bit thicker and then we went back and we added three eyelashes only on the sides now we're going to work on the bottom of our eyes okay so on the bottom we're going to make some curvy lines too, and those are also going to be touching the bottom of the circle, but they're not connected. If you notice, the bottom curvy line and the top curvy line does not touch. There's going to be a space in between, over here and over here. So just make a curvy line on the bottom that touches your circle, but don't connect them. Leave a space, okay? Let's take a sip of my water. Okay, so we're done with the eyes. Now we're gonna move on to the mouth. So you're gonna have two choices for the mouth, okay? You can make a simple smile. Let me just erase this a little bit. See, the pencil smudges very easily on canvas, so be very careful not to rub your hands all over it. So if you want, you could do a simple smile like this, okay? And I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to show you another way you can do it. So this is going to be your choice. I'm going to draw it in the back so you can see. You can kind of see. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll draw the, the lips on a piece of paper because I don't want it to show through. It might look weird. So again, just look here. You can do this or let me grab a piece of paper. And I'll show you another way you can draw a mouth, okay? So you can draw like lips that look like real lips. So if you're going to draw lips, you want to start off by making a straight line like that. And this is only if you want to do the regular lips. If you don't want to do regular lips, just make a smile, okay? So you're going to start with a straight line. Then you're going to make the top lip over that straight line and then you're going to make one big curve for the bottom lip just like that okay so this is two different ways you can make my mouth you can make it like this or just a very simple smiley face so smiley face or lips like this you decide okay I'm going to put that down and we're going to go back to the rest of the drawing. So before we can do any of my hair, we need to um, do my clothes. Oh, we could add one more thing before we go on though. Let's do my ears. So the ears should be small and they need to be on the sides of my head because that's where ears go, right? So there are my ears. I made one there and one there and make sure they're kind of on the sides. Don't make my ears too big. Perfect. And now that we're done with the face for now, we're going to move on to my dress. And then we'll go back to the hair, okay? So to start my dress, we're going to do the neckline. The neckline is, see this top of my dress right here, this curve? So this is the curve that we're going to do first. Okay, so we're going to make a curve right under my chin, just like this, which would be kind of this right here. That's called a neckline on a shirt or a dress. 
So a curve right under my chin. Okay, so make sure you have that in place first before we do the rest. So now when we do the rest of my dress, instead of going straight down, you want to kind of take your line. You see where my finger is? Follow my finger. So when you're doing the dress, you want to go straight down, but you want to curve out a little bit. So we're not going straight. We're going to go out just a little bit. And I'm going to trace that with marker so you can see it better. Okay. So it's not a perfectly straight line. It almost looks like it is, but it's not. And don't go too close to the bottom. You want to make sure we have some room to add the little wavy lines. So go as close to the bottom as you can, but leave a tiny bit of room so we can add some waves at the bottom. Hello. I feel like I'm playing peekaboo with you guys. Okay, good. So when you're done making the lines, we're going to connect those two lines with a wavy line at the bottom. Okay, so make that line a little bit wavy at the bottom because usually dresses aren't perfectly straight, especially when they're flowy and they're touching the floor. We're making, we're making my old dress, by the way. We're making my dress from Frozen, the first one. So again, if you just tuned in, please don't rush. I don't want you to fall behind. I'd rather have you, you can watch the live if you'd like. That way you'll kind of know what to do. But I'd rather have you wait until this is all done and then go back into the group and watch it from the beginning so you can do it at your own pace, okay? But feel free to stay and watch me if you'd like and then go back and do it the second time, okay? So we've got the two sides and then we've got a wavy line connecting the sides of the dress. Now we're going to make a curvy line right under my neckline. So let me trace that so you can see. Okay. So right over here, right under the neckline, we're just doing a curvy line right there. Okay, good. Now we're going to work on my arms. So the arms are going to come from right up here and they're going to go down almost to the middle. Okay. So I started my arm right here. I came down and then I connected it with a straight line. Perfect. Now, we're going to do the other arm, so do the same thing on the other side. Make sure you give me two arms. Okay. Now we're going to keep my hands really, really simple. If you want to do fingers, you can. But we're just going to keep it very simple today and just do two little curves. So just do that. We're going to pretend those are my hands. We're keeping it super simple, but you can do them different if you'd like. You can give me fingers. But I know some of the kids that are going to be drawing this are a little bit younger, so this is going to be easier for them. But if you're a little bit older and you know how to draw fingers, go right ahead. So we're going to finish off my dress and this is like the cape part, the flowy like sheer cape that has the snowflakes on it. We want it to be long. So we're going to start by doing a little line from my hand. So watch my finger and then I'll trace it in marker. So starting right here on my hand, you're going to curve out and then we're going to connect. Okay. 
That's a really good question, Joan. The reason why I'm not doing the Frozen 2 dress is because a lot of kids have not watched Frozen 2 yet, but most children have watched the first Frozen, and this dress is a little bit easier for them as well. But that's a really good question. So, you're going to start on my hand, and you're going to curve out. See how I did that? I curved out like that. I'm going to do that on both sides, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to trace this one. Somebody is trying to contact me. Okay. So again, we're starting on the hands and then we're making a curvy line going out on both sides. This is going to be my cape. And then we're going to connect this to the bottom of my dress. Okay. So curvy line out coming from the hands and then connect it to the bottom of my dress. Perfect. Now we get to work on my hair. I'm so excited about this part. So the first thing we need to do is add that little piece of hair, that stubborn little piece of hair that not, no matter how much hairspray I use doesn't stay in place. It kind of did today, but Usually when it's windy, it always comes out. So we're going to make that little piece of hair. So you're going to start kind of where that little point is. And you're going to make, let me see if I could trace it. I'm doing this backwards. So hopefully, let me put it closer so maybe you can see better. Okay. So you're going to start right here. And you're going to make a curvy V shape. And I did my best. <laughs> so again, watch my finger. Start right here, and then you're going to curve, and then go up, okay? Perfect. Maybe I'll keep it nice and close for the rest of the hair, too. So now my hair is kind of poofy a little bit on the top. See, you can kind of see it. My hair's a little poofy, so when we do my hair, you kind of want it to go up nice and high. I had a little bit of room left above my hair, so can anyone read what I wrote? Does anyone know what that says? If you know what this says, type it in. People are trying to message me and call me, so I have to put my finger on the screen and... Get it off the screen. There we go. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. So we want to make the hair big. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right about here. It does. Yes, it says show yourself. That's one of the new songs from Frozen 2. It's a beautiful song, isn't it? So I had a little bit of room left and I wrote show yourself. So we're going to do the hair like I said. So we're going to start around my shoulders, so find my shoulders on both sides. We're going to start on the top of my shoulders. We're going to go around my ear, up high, and then come back around my other ear, and then connect it to the other shoulder. So I'm going to trace that in marker, and then I'll show you and I'll explain it again, okay? So don't do anything yet. Wait for me, okay? Oh, Olaf is singing in the background right now. Okay, so I'm going to explain that again, so just listen, okay? So we're starting on my shoulder right there. We're going around, not too far from my ear. When you're doing this, you don't want to go out here. So stay kind of close to my ear a little bit. So around up nice and high come back around stay kind of close to my ear just like you did on this side and then you're going to come down and you're going to connect that to my other shoulder perfect so i'm going to give you a little while to do that because i know that can be a little bit hard so work on the hair Perfect. So 
So while we're waiting for some of you to perfect my hair, um, besides Show Yourself, is there another song that you love from Frozen that's your favorite? If there's another song that you like besides Show Yourself, you can type that in as well. Or if you like one of the songs from the first movie better, you can type that song in too. Because we have a lot of good songs in the first Frozen movie. So I'll give you guys a couple more seconds, not a couple, a little bit more than that, to do the, the shape of the hair. So again, I'll repeat it one more time, okay? So we're starting on my shoulder right here. We're going around, a little bit close to the ear, not too far away. And then above, nice big hair, come down, stay kind of close to my ear again, and then connect it to the shoulder. Ooh, someone said into the unknown. Yes, that's a really good one too. Yep, Frozen 2 is in the background. It sure is. If you tuned in a little bit late, that's what we're playing in the background. It is on Disney Plus right now if you have Disney Plus. Oh, this will all make sense when I am older. That's right. That's Olaf's new song. He was just singing that, I think. Okay. So hopefully that was enough time for everyone to do the outside of my hair. So this is where it gets a little tricky, but I promise you, if you stay with me, it's going to be really easy, okay? So we're going to find this little point. See the little heart-shaped head that we originally drew? Find the little point right there. Put your finger on it. Okay, we're going to start there. And we're going to make two lines. One that goes out this way, we're going to go back to the point, one that goes out the opposite direction, and then we're going to go back to that little point a third time and make one that's in the middle, but if you notice that middle line is not straight, it goes in the same direction as this one. So let's start right here. I'm going to try to do this backwards, so forgive me if I don't trace my pencil lines perfectly. So I'm starting on my point. And I'm curving this way. There we go. So start on the point, curve that way. Okay. Go back to the little point in the heart. You're going to curve the opposite direction now. Let's see if I can do this. Okay. Perfect. So again, I started the point. I curved this way. Went back to my point. I curved the other way. Now this one here is going to go in the same direction as this guy right here, okay? But it's going to kind of stay in the middle. So we're going to go back to that point and make another curve. I can't really see. There we go. I think I did that, right? Yeah, it looks pretty good. So again, start at your point. Go this way. Back to the point. Go that way, and then go back to the point a third time. Make a line in the middle, but make it curve this way, like this, this line, okay? Ooh, some things never change. Yes, that's a good one, too. And, of course, let it go from the first movie. Who doesn't love that song? Okay, so back to our hair. So if you notice... There are going to be three lines above my ears. So we're going to start with a line that's right above my ear, okay? Let me turn this around. So this first line actually touches the top of my ears and it curves down. So find my ears and start on the top of my ear and make a curvy line down. Can you guys see that? You can see this one on this side a little bit better. Oh, Lost in the Woods by Kristoff. Isn't it so funny? It's like an 80s ballad. It's hilarious. All right, so you're going to start on the top of my ear, make a little curve down, and do the same thing on the other side. And then we're going to make two more lines above that, leaving some space in between, okay? So don't put these lines too close together. I'm going to trace a second one. Okay. So I made another line above my ear right here. A second one. We started with the one that's on my ear. 
Now we're going to leave a little space, make another one here, same thing on the other side. Okay, and then our third one, we're going to leave a little space again. I would probably say, like your finger is a little bit smaller than mine, but I would say like a finger space. So put your finger there and do like a finger space apart for this top one. Okay. So you should have three lines on each side. One, two, and the third one is touching the top of my ears. Make sure that you did that on both sides. Okay. Now we're going to start making some lines on the bottom. I'm going to have to turn this around because I know it's hard to see and it got a little smudged and then I'll explain it. Okay. So these lines are going to curve in the opposite direction. So think of it like, you know, when you make a smile, the, the direction, see if you look at the smile, the direction that that curve goes in. We're going to make three curves on the bottom part of my hair underneath my ear. So curve this way, curve that way, and then curve a third time. So one, starting under my ear, two, and three. And they curve kind of like when you're making a smile in that direction. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side too. Okay, so one, two, three, one, two, three, and then there should be two, three on the top as well. So make sure you have three lines above the ear and three lines below your, the ears, okay? Now the braid is the trickiest part, but I'm going to make it really easy for you. I know it looks super complicated, but it's really not. And in the picture that you saw, the braid was like on top of my dress, but I thought that was going to make things really hard for you and you'd have to do a lot of erasing. So instead of putting the braid on top of my dress, I decided to put my braid off to the side so it would be a lot easier for everyone, okay? So what we're going to do, do we all know how to make the letter U shape? So we're going to start off by making a letter U. If you look closely, see, you can kind of see like a big letter U. Part of it's already done on this side. We're just going to finish that shape. So kind of let me see if I can draw this with you so you can see better, okay? Let's see if I can go as close as I possibly can. And I'm going to make this U shape. So this, car, this is kind of already here because that's part of my sleeve. So you can just start right there and just make a big U and connect it to my hair that we already had. So again, we're starting right here and making a big U shape and connect it to my hair, okay? And then we're going to make two more smaller U shapes. Remember, when you make a braid, it starts off big at the top, and as you get closer to the bottom of your braid, it starts to get a little, little bit smaller, okay? So we're going to make two more U shapes Okay, so if you look closely, this is the big U that we just did, that we started with. Then I made another U. Can you see that? And then another U. So you should have one, two, three U shapes that are all connected. So if you look at the first letter U shape, the big one, it has a line going through it from the hair that was already there. So we want to make these two U shapes look like this big, this big one, the first one, by putting a line that goes sideways, okay? So see how it starts up here in the corner of the U and it goes sideways? We're going to do that on the two small ones. Okay, so let me turn this around. So you see how I went to my U shapes and I started up here 
and I made a sideways line and I did the same thing on that one. So make sure all three U shapes have a line that starts on the top and goes sideways, kind of in the middle somewhere. And then to make it look more like a braid, we're going to go on the other side of our U and make another line, but a shorter line. So look at the top one. We kind of went over here and we made a short line that goes into the middle of our sideways line. So this one was already here. We just added a little short line somewhere around the middle of our slanted line, okay? We're going to do something like that for these as well, okay? So look, see? So two short lines that go into the middle of our slanted line. There and there and there. So make sure you do that for all three. So I think it kind of looks like a braid, right? You can tell that's supposed to be a braid. It's the easiest way I could think of anyway. Now we're going to do, like, we can pretend that's like an elastic. So you can make, like, kind of like a rectangle shape at the end and pretend that's an elastic. And then we're going to make the end. So if you look closely, the bottom of my braid curls out. You see how it does that? Looks like a hook or a J. So we're going to draw the bottom. And it kind of looks like the letter J a little bit or a hook. It curves out. So make the bottom of my braid curve out like that. We're almost done drawing, guys. I cannot wait to see these. Now, in the original picture, there was a snowman, and if you look closely, I drew him, but I wasn't happy with what he looked like, and plus he doesn't look like Olaf anyway. So I'm going to make a snowflake. If you want to make a snowman, go right ahead, but if not, I'm going to teach you how to make a snowflake, and then I uh, have some glue and some glitter, that I used to do my glitter tattoos. I'm gonna add some glitter on my snowflake later and on my dress too. So if anyone has glue and glitter at home, you can do this as well. Um, I have special glue, but you can do this with like a glue stick or maybe a little bit of Elmer's glue once your paint is dry. And then you can sprinkle some glitter on it and let it dry, but we'll go over that later. So for now, I'm gonna show you how to draw a snowflake if you'd like to make a snowflake instead of a snowman on the side. So you're going to start, and I'm going to turn this around because it's easier for me. You're going to start by making a big cross. Make the lines nice and long. So long line, and then another long across, as long as it lets you make it. So use whatever room you have left. But you want this one to be nice and long, and then whatever room you have left to go sideways, use up that space. Snowflakes are a lot um, easier than you think. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the letter X in the middle of this cross. But we want to make the lines from our X shorter. Don't make them as long. So if you look closely, I made the letter X right through the middle. Can you see that? line there and a line there and if you look closely the lines from my x are a lot shorter than the lines from my cross so make sure that the x lines are a lot shorter you don't want them to be the same size now does everyone know how to make the letter v because we're going to make lots of v's in this shape to make it look like a snowflake okay so we're going to start with this long one, this top one. So depending on how big you made your snowflake, you can just make two letter V's or three letter V's. But I left this little line sticking out. I didn't do it on the, um, the edge. You can if you want. So I made a little V shape there 
I left some space and made another V shape and then I made another V shape. So don't go on, just wait for me, okay? So do that. You can do two or three, but don't squish them in there if your snowflake is smaller than mine. Okay? Um, Joan, you don't need glitter. You just need paint, crayons, or markers. The glitter is just an added bonus if you have it, okay? So what we're going to do, now that we've done the top, we're going to flip our painting upside down. So make me upside down. Flip me upside down. And we're going to do the same thing on this one now, okay? So this one I only made two V-shapes. So same thing, but I'm upside down now. Okay, so these two should have a little, some V's in them. Then I'm going to flip me sideways. I'm going to flip myself this way now. And I'm going to add... A V shape right there and right there. Mine are kind of crooked because I'm doing this upside down. I want yours to look better than mine, though. So you got me sideways. You're going to do this one. Add two Vs. Then you're going to flip me over on the other side. Where's my snowflake? There it is. So flip me over this way now because now we're going to work on this one. If you don't have paint, crayons, or markers, then I guess you're just going to have to draw the painting for now. And when you do, you can go back and color it in. Okay. I'm sure Mommy has some crayons somewhere. You can ask her. She probably hid them from the baby. Okay. So now that you have me sideways again, we're going to do the part of the snowflake that's near my arm, this one right here. And you're going to make two more V-shapes, just like that. When you're done with that, you're going to flip me the right way, put me back where I belong. And what you should have left is the X. See, find the X that we drew in the middle, and on the end of the X, one, two, three, four, can you see the ends? You're going to make just one V. That's it. So where the X is, you're going to make just one V shape. Okay? So this is the X in the middle. I went back and I just added one V shape at the ends of my X. And now you have a snowflake. So look how pretty that is. You can make your snowflake different if you want, but if you've never made one before, that's a very simple way to do it and it looks very pretty. So now that we're all done drawing me, what I need you guys to do is I need you to go find a black marker. It doesn't have to be a Sharpie. I'm not even using Sharpie. This one is from Amazon. Amazon makes good markers. They're good for canvases. But if you don't have a Sharpie, any um, permanent black marker is great. So you're going to trace everything. You don't have to trace the snowflake if you don't want to, but you do need to trace everything on me. Everything. And then if you want to write something at the top, you can write something or you can leave it blank. But I want you concentrating on just tracing me because when we're done with this painting, you could always go back and add more to the background on your own. But we don't have time for wait for people to do the background right now because we need to move on to the painting, okay? So the only thing I want you guys doing right now is just tracing me in marker, okay? You can do the snowflake in marker or you can leave it in pencil. Either way works for your snowflake, okay? So I'm going to put this down because you should have everything drawn out. You're just tracing over your pencil. So while... um. The children, or the adults, if the adults are making this, while they're tracing in marker, I'm going to go over the supplies that we need so we can start painting if you're using paint. 
Once again, if you don't have paint, you can do this in crayon or marker. It just is a little bit different, but I'm sure you could figure it out. Um, so what we're going to need is um, a paper towel or a napkin so you can dry your brush. So make sure you find that. And then you're going to need a plastic bin or a cup. Don't use a cup that you're going to use for drinking. This is non-toxic, but you don't want to do that anyway. So use a, a disposable cup, one that you could throw away, or an old cup that you know that you're not going to drink from. And this is just an old Tupperware. So I'm using that. Um, you're going to fill this up with water. And then um, you're going to get one or two small brushes. You'll need one, but if you have more, that's great because it's easier to rinse in between. And then you're going to need a paper plate to put paint on. And then you're going to need some colors. So the colors that you're going to need for paint are going to be white, an orange, and you're probably wondering, why do we need orange paint? I don't see any orange. Well, if you don't have a peach color or skin color paint, which most people don't have that at home, we're going to make some by adding a teeny tiny bit of orange to white paint to make the color for my skin. So that's why you need orange, unless you have peach. Um, so the other color that we're going to need is going to be yellow. So my hair is really not yellow. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to add some white to this yellow to make it lighter, like a really, really light blonde. Because my hair is not white either. My hair is in between yellow and white. So it's like a very pale yellow. So we're going to do that. And then we need some purple for my eyeshadow. We've got some pink if we want to add rosy cheeks. And then we need blue. This is turquoise. If you don't have turquoise, any shade of blue works. You just have to add white to it to make it a little bit lighter, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this color the way it is for part of my dress. And then I'm going to add white to it to make it really light for the rest of my dress. And then if you want to do glitter, you want to wait until your paint is dry. So if you want to do glitter, you can either do um, blue glitter like this. I don't know if you guys can see that. So it's like a turquoise. Or you can even do silver glitter if you have silver. Those two colors will work great. And then you just put a little bit of glue where you want the glitter to go and put the glitter on it and you let your painting sit for a few minutes so it can dry. If you pick up your painting right away after you put the glitter, it'll just fall off, okay? But we'll go over that later, okay? So everyone is just tracing in marker right now. Okay. Is there anyone that needs more time to trace in marker? Okay, good. So we're going to get started. So the first two colors that we're going to need are going to be some white paint. So put some white, not too much. Um, if you plan on making more paintings, um, we don't know if we're going to be able to get more paint. So just use a tiny bit of paint at a, at a time so you don't waste it, okay? And then, this is clogged, so hold on a second. There we go. And then you can always add more, okay? So just start off with a little bit of paint of any color that I tell you, and you could always add more. So a little bit of white and a really tiny bit of orange because we don't need much orange at all. Then you're going to take your small brush, and with acrylic paint, you always want to dry your brush. You never want to put a wet brush into this kind of paint. So you need to dry it. And you need to do it gently. You're going to press it very lightly. See how gentle I am? I'm just pressing it down like this. You never want to dry your brush like this because you'll ruin your bristles and then it'll paint really messy. So every time you're, you rinse your brush, you want to dry it gentle on your paper towel. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off, can you see my white and can you see my orange? We're going to take a really small, just a little bit of orange and mix it with all of my white. We want to make a peachy color, but 
My skin is very pale, so we don't want to make it too peachy. So we're just adding a tiny bit of orange to this white because my skin isn't white, right? So I don't know if you guys can see. It's hard to tell, but I just added a tiny bit of orange to make a very light or pale peach color, okay? So when you're kind of, actually, if you look up here, you want like a color like this. So you're going to take that color and you're going to start by painting my face. So you're going to go around my eyes. I don't know if you can kind of see. This color is so pale. Let's see. I'm just going to change, see if I could change the lighting and see if it helps. Hold on a second. I don't know if that works. There we go, you can see it a little bit, right there. You're gonna start by tracing around both my eyes and you're gonna paint over my eyelashes, so don't worry, okay? So paint around, now you can see the paint a little bit better. Paint around my eyes like that. And you're gonna put a little bit of paint over my eyelashes, we're gonna fix them later, okay? But you have to paint over them. I know you don't want to, and it looks weird for a little while, but trust me, it'll look better in the end. And you're going to do the same thing to the other eye. So I'm just tracing around my other eye with this very light peachy color. And you can make it a little bit darker if you want to. Okay. So after I trace around both my eyes... You're going to start painting over my nose and my mouth. And we're going to fix those later too, okay? So I'm just going to go back now and start painting my entire face. Remember, you're going around the eyes. We're not painting inside the eyes. Just go around over the eyelashes a little bit over the nose and over the mouth. And then you have to paint my forehead around my hair. I'm gonna paint around that little piece of hair that's on my forehead. And if you have any globs of paint, make sure you spread them out, okay? You don't want any globs. It will never dry. So spread out your paint before you add more onto your brush. So when you're done with a face, you can see the color a little bit now, can't you? There it is. When you're done with a face, don't rinse your brush because we're not done with that color. There's a couple more things we need to do. So remember we talked about the neckline on my dress? So... The area above the neckline is my neck. So we need to add that color in that section too. So right here, let me come closer. Right there, we need to add that color right on my neck. Right above the dress. And again, you're painting over your marker, okay? We're gonna fix everything later. So we added that color right in there on my neck. And then the last thing we're going to do with this color are my hands. So you might have done the hands differently, but they're still going to be this color. Oh, and I forgot something very important. I forgot my ears. Oh, we would have gone back, but I just remembered I have to paint my ears too. They're part of my face. So not my hair, just my ears. So let's go over all the stuff that we need to do in this light peachy color, okay? So we need to do my whole face, and we're going around my eyes, but we are going to have to paint over my eyelashes, okay? You're also going to paint over my nose, my mouth. Don't forget the ears. I almost forgot to paint my ears. We're going to paint the neckline right here underneath my chin, okay? And then you're going to paint both my hands, even if you drew them differently, you're still going to paint them this color, okay? 
perfect. So no rush. I don't want anyone to do this quickly. I want it to look nice and neat. So take your time. But at the same time, I want you to listen because I have to move ahead, okay? So keep listening even if you're not caught up. So when you are done doing all those things with this color, you're going to rinse and dry your brush, and I'm going to tell you what colors you need next. Okay. So I'll wait about 30 more seconds before we move on to our next colors. I'm going to tell you what they are just in case you want to get them ready, but I'll wait a little bit longer. So you're going to need more white. So put some white on a separate part of your plate because we already used our white to make the skin color. So get a little bit more white, put it somewhere else on your plate, and you're going to put a little bit of yellow next to your white. So those are the next colors that we're going to be using. trying to get my yellow paint open. So let me show you. So I added more white, clean white, and I added some yellow next to it. So white and yellow are the next two colors. I'm not wearing any gloves. There are no gloves. They're just my hands. But that's a really good question, though. Okay, so we're going to move on now to the hair, okay? If you're not done, that's okay, because the hair is super easy to figure out. So you're just going to take some white paint and some yellow paint, and you're going to mix it together to make a really, really light yellow. You don't want my hair to be white, but you don't want it to be a bright yellow either, okay? So let me mix mine together. I'm going to put this down for a sec. I'm going to mix my paint. So what I'm going to do, this time, instead of putting the yellow into my white, I'm going to put white into my yellow. So I'm going to get a nice big scoop of white paint, and I'm going to mix it into my yellow paint to make my yellow a little bit lighter. Okay, see how it got a little bit lighter? I'm going to go back into my white. I want to grab a little bit more. I don't want the yellow to be too pale, but I don't want it to be too dark either or too bright. So keep adding white until you're happy with the shade of your yellow. Okay, so very pale yellow like that. And then I'm going to start by painting my hair. I'm going to start by painting the top. And you could add more white if you want the yellow to be a little bit lighter. It's your painting. You decide, okay? But you don't want a really bright or dark yellow. So I'm going to start painting my hair. I always start from the top and work my way down. That way you don't accidentally put your sleeve into the wet paint and smudge it. And don't forget to paint the little piece of hair on my forehead. And spread out any globs. If there are any globs of paint, spread them out first before you add more paint on your brush. And once again, you're painting over the marker, okay? We're going to go fix that later when everything is dry, I promise. Okay? And then don't forget to go around my ears. So when you get near my ear, don't accidentally paint my ear yellow. Make sure you go around my ear. So if you look over here, don't paint over my ear by accident. Make sure you go around it, okay? And then the same thing on this side. Okay. I'm going to go very careful around my ear so I don't make it yellow. Go around both ears. 
And then I'm going to start doing the hair underneath the ears. See? Perfect. So I'm going to stop so some of you can catch up. I don't want to go too fast. So again, I mixed a little bit of yellow and white together to make my yellow a little bit lighter. And I started with the top of my hair. I did the little piece of hair on my forehead. Then I started doing the sides. It is. Show yourself is on. <laughs> I get to wear my hair down sometimes now. It's so exciting. It's doing this braid, you know, it takes a long time. So it's a lot easier to wear my hair down. Okay, so when you're done doing the top, remember, go really careful. Don't accidentally paint over my ears. Go nice and slow around my ears, okay? And then you could start painting the hair underneath the ears. And then we're going to paint the braid. Just remember this little this little spot right here is not part of the braid. We're going to make that kind of like an elastic, you know. If you accidentally paint it, it's not a big deal. You can paint over it. So I'm going to start painting the braid. Okay. And then I'm not going to paint that because remember, I want I want to make that an elastic. That's just what I want to do. And then the bottom part is also going to be yellow. So don't forget to paint that. So see how I left that white? Like I said, if you accidentally paint it yellow, it's okay. We can paint over it. So that's what your hair is going to look like when you're done. I'm going to give you guys a couple of minutes to catch up on the hair. I'm going to stretch out my legs a little bit. I'm sitting in a really little chair right now. So the only color that we have left um, is going to be, well, there's two colors. There's three colors, actually. But um, we're going to wait on one of them. I think I know what I want to do next. So finish the hair. But while you're finishing the hair, I want you to get a tiny bit of white and a tiny bit of pink. Like two little dots on your plate of each color. That's all you need. So a dot of white and a dot of pink. So work on that once you're done with the hair, okay? I'm going to put this down for a second so I can mix, get my paints, okay? So tiny bit of white, tiny bit of pink, like a dot of each color. So let me show you. Very small amount, a little bit of white, a little bit of pink, okay? I'm making sure my brush is nice and clean, and I'm going to dry it off. So let me hold up the picture again. Make sure you finish the hair before you do this next part, okay? So look at the picture, make sure you didn't miss anything. So we're getting a little bit of white and a little bit of pink together. We're going to make um, some blush for my cheeks. Okay, so this is not for the eyes. We're going to do um, purple eyeshadow for the eyes. So we're going to take some white and we're going to take some pink. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of pink into the white to make a very, very, very light pink. You could always go back and make it a little bit brighter if you put it on the face and it doesn't show. But start off with a very, very light pink. Okay, it's hard to see. I don't know if you can see that. You'll see it better in the picture, I think. And then you don't want a big glob on your brush. So after you're done mixing, find a clean spot and dab most of the paint off. 
And then you're going to find my cheeks. So my cheeks would be right here and right here, kind of on the sides of my nose, underneath my eyes. And you're going to make kind of like a circle. But remember, you only want a tiny bit of paint on your brush, not a big glob, okay? And you're going to make some pink cheeks. So let's see if that shows up. If this doesn't show up, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. See, it's very, very light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and add more pink to my white. You might have to add more pink if you need to. I just don't want the cheeks to be too pink. Okay. So let me try that again. That's a little bit better. Perfect. You don't want them to be too pink. Do you see that? So make a little circle, a light pink circle on my cheek. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Hopefully mine line up because I'm doing this upside down. All right, let's see. Do they kind of look the same? Oh, that's not bad at all. So give me some rosy cheeks with some light pink paint, just a little bit on your brush. How cute is that? Okay, perfect. How cute. I love it. Also, while you have pink paint out, if you want, you can put some pink, regular pink, not the light pink that we just made for my cheeks. If you have some pink, you could put some on my lips if you want. That's up to you, okay? You can leave my mouth regular, or you can uh, trace it in pink, or if you did the mouth. Remember, I gave you a choice if you wanted to do the mouth this way. If you did the mouth this way, you probably want to paint them pink. But even with this one, you could always take regular pink and just trace over it. Okay? So when you're done with the cheeks, we're going to work on my eyeshadow. So we need purple. So get a tiny bit, just a dot, dot of purple paint when you're ready. I'm going to put this down for a second. I promise I'll hold it back up, okay? So make sure your brush is clean and dry. And we're going to get a dot of purple paint. a little bit see just a tiny bit of purple we don't want to waste paint so you're gonna dip into your purple see the amount I have on my brush it's hard to see I know let me see if I could see if that works there we go so just a little bit of purple and then before I even put this on the painting I'm gonna find a clean spot and I'm gonna dab most of that purple off Remember, you could always add more, but if you start with too much, it's hard to fix. So dip a tiny bit into the purple and then find a clean spot and dab most of it off of your brush. And then think about what eyeshadow looks like. It goes on the top of your eyes. So again, I'm doing this upside down, so hopefully it looks okay. So I'm going to start above this black line. I'm going to start painting right above it. And I'm going to smudge. It's going to look like it's smudged. I'm smudging some purple over that line for eyeshadow. So if you look closely, it's not a thick line. It looks like it's smudged, and that's what it should look like. And you're going to go over some of the eyelashes. I'm going to maybe bring it over here a little bit more. I'm going to smudge it out. You should have a very small amount on your brush. So that's what it's going to look like. And then I'm going to go back. I'm going to dip into a little bit of purple again, just a tiny bit. And then I'm going to find another clean spot and dab most of that off, just like I did the first time. And do the same thing on the other eye. Remember, you want a very small amount of paint, and you're just going to smudge it over the top of the eye and over the eyelashes a little bit. You can always go back and add more. Hard to take it away. Okay, pretty cool, huh? 
How's that? I think that looks really good. Okay. So now I have purple eyeshadow. Sometimes it looks pink. Sometimes it looks purple. It's actually a combination of, it's hard to see with this lighting, but my eyeshadow is kind of a combination of pink and purple. Let's see, we have a question. How quick is this posted so we can start? I thought the time was four. Nope, today we started at two o'clock. It's a different time every day for every painting. Um, so as soon as we finish, this will automatically get posted to the group only, not the event. So you have to go on the event, on the group, which I'm assuming you're on right now. And you're gonna go under the photos section of the group and it should be on there. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be labeled, but it will be on there. You'll be able to tell because you'll see me. <laughs> okay, so we've got the eyeshadow, we've got the blush. If you wanted to do my lips, like I said, you could use your regular pink and you can trace over the mouth or you can color in the lips if you did them this way. So now we're gonna work on my eye color, okay? So when we're doing the eyes, it's very important that you don't paint the whole eye. We wanna make sure that the outside of the eye stays white and then the middle is gonna end up being black later. So we're only gonna paint inside of this big circle and if you get a little bit on the little circle, that's okay, because the black will cover it. But we want to make sure that we don't get any color on the sides, on the corners of the eyes. Because if you look at the person on the side of you, the, um, the outside of the eyes needs to stay white, okay? So we're going to grab some blue paint. So put some blue paint in your plate. Make sure that your brush is clean and dry. And you're only going to paint this part of the eye. Let me finish before you start, okay? Let me do mine first. There we go. So you see when you compare, you're only doing that part of the eye. Don't paint the circle. If you do, that's okay because black will cover it. But you need to make sure that this stays white and that stays white on the side of the eyes, okay? So you're going to do that to both of the eyes and go nice and slow and just a little paint on your brush. If you put too much paint, you might accidentally paint the wrong thing, okay? So go slow and only put a little bit of paint on your brush. Perfect. So when you're done, it should look just like this. How pretty is that? And then we're going to keep continuing with this color. We've got some more to do with this color. So my dress is going to be two shades of blue. It's going to be this blue, and then we're going to add white to this blue to make it a little bit lighter. If you don't have this exact shade of blue, just start off with whatever blue that you have, and then we'll add white to that as well, okay? So just start off with your regular blue for now, whatever shade you have. Now we're going to continue using the same color. We're going to do the little elastic. Remember I told you not to paint that little spot at the bottom? So we're just going to paint that this color too. It'll look pretty. There we go. See, I kind of like that. It'll match my dress. So we're going to paint that blue as well. Now the only part of my dress that's going to be this shade of blue is from this curve down. So we're not painting the sleeves, the cape, or the top of the dress this color. Just from this curve down right here is the only part of the dress that's getting painted this shade. After that, we're going to add white paint to it to make it a lighter blue for the rest. So using the same blue that we used for the eyes and the elastic, we're going to Start painting underneath this curve. Don't do the top of the dress this color. So I'm going to trace it because I like to trace things because I think it looks a lot neater if you trace them first. Okay. So remember, from this curve down, don't paint the top of the dress. 
I'm just going to turn this sideways for a minute so I can trace it and then I'll, I'll show you. Perfect. So what I did was I took that color and I traced the part of the dress that I want to paint. And now I'm going to go back with that same color and I'm going to color it in. I'm just going to turn this a little bit so you guys can see better. So now I'm just going to go back and I'm going to color this in. Making sure not to paint the top of my dress. And make sure you spread out any globs. If you notice too, I'm painting only up and down direction. So when you paint, you want to try to pick a direction and stay in that direction. So if you started by painting sideways, try to paint the rest sideways. If you paint all different directions, when your paint dries, sometimes you can see all your brush strokes. So I'm just going up and down and I'm sticking with that direction. You don't have to do that, but it does look a little bit nicer when it dries. So towards the bottom, I kind of had to go sideways, but other than that, I'm sticking with up and down like this. Okay. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to make sure that I didn't miss anything. I'm going to fill everything in, spreading out my paint. Make sure there's no little white showing through. Fill it all in. Okay. So I'm going to stop here to make sure that everyone is caught up. So the three things that we need to do with this regular shade of blue are going to be the eyes, the little elastic on the braid, and just this part of the dress. Don't do anything else on the dress with this color, okay? So I'm going to let you guys catch up. We're almost done. Oh, actually, you know what? There is one more thing you can do with this color. So if you finish the dress and you're waiting for the next color, you can continue and you could trace your snowflake. And again, you don't have to, but if you're waiting for me, you guys can start tracing your snowflake with this color too. So I'm just tracing my snowflake because you can't really do it in white because the background is white. So I'm going to make my snowflake blue to match my dress. And I'm just tracing over all those little lines and those little V shapes that we made. And then you know what? I think I'm going to add glitter on my snowflake once it's dry. Perfect. Okay, good. I think I got it all. So I just traced my snowflake with some blue. Isn't that pretty? And then later when it's dry, I'm going to put glitter on it. All right. So while we're waiting, let's go over a couple of things. While we're waiting for everyone to catch up, you can work on your snowflake while I'm talking. Um, so a couple of things today. So I'm, I offered to do some live chats. I don't know if you know what that is, but on Facebook, you can go on this thing called Messenger and you can talk to me like kind of like, you know how you could see me now, but I can't hear your voice. So if you go on the Messenger app, we can actually both see each other because I can't see you right now. I know you can see me, but I can't see you or hear you. So if we go on that, we could do a live chat on Messenger and we could actually see and hear each other. So we could talk for a few minutes and that's going to be free. So if anyone wants to do that with me at the end, you need to have your adult message me and send me a message and we're going to figure out what time that I can do that with you. Okay. And when we figure out a time, I will call you on the messenger and we'll be able to see each other and talk to each other. So I'm going to be doing that when we finish this painting up until about five o'clock. So if you want to do that with me today, and it doesn't have to be a special occasion, but if you just had a birthday or you have a birthday coming up, that'll be really cool. Don't you think? 
but you don't really need a reason to talk to me. Any reason is fine, okay? But your adult has to message me to set up a time, and I'm only doing that up to 5 o'clock today, all right? So that's one thing. The next thing is I know some people had asked how we give a donation. Um, so donations are going to be done one of two ways. You can do Venmo or you could do PayPal. So when the painting is all done, I'm going to post a picture of my completed painting and then I will post the Venmo picture. So you have that info and I'll also post the email for PayPal, okay? So you'll just go back on the group. <laughs> so when, you, uh, when you're done, just go back on the group and just look for the picture and I will post the information if you wanted to make a donation, okay? So, anyway, are we ready to continue? So, we're going to stay with that color, but what we're going to do is we're going to add some white to this blue that we just used to make it a light blue. So, I'm going to put this down. I'm going to grab some more white paint, and I'm going to add some more of this paint. If you didn't use all your blue, you should have enough, but if you used all your blue, grab a little bit more. Grab some fresh white paint. And you don't even have to rinse your brush, but if you already did that, that's okay. Don't forget to dry it, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the blue that we just used, which was this one right here, and some fresh white paint, and I'm going to add a little bit of this blue into my white to make a light blue, kind of like the color of the sky. Think of a light blue like the sky. So you want your two blues to be different. You don't want them to be too similar. So if you look closely, I took some of the blue that we just used and I mixed it into my white to make a very um, light blue or like a baby blue. So with that color, the first thing I'm going to paint is going to be, since I have a, a lot of paint on my brush, I'm going to start with a larger section. So I'm going to start with my cape. So right here. I'm gonna start painting my cape. You see, what a pretty shade of blue, isn't it? So I'm gonna start painting my cape. Be careful around my hands. You don't wanna accidentally paint my hands blue. Perfect. So I started to paint my cape this light blue. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, okay? Okay, so I painted my cape. When I'm done with my cape, I'm going to paint my sleeves. Once again, be very careful you don't accidentally paint my hands, okay? So my sleeves, not my hands. Perfect. So, so far we've done my cape on both sides. We've done both my sleeves, not painting my hands. As you can see, I accidentally got some on my hands, but that's because I'm painting upside down. And then we're going to do one more section. So remember, when we paint the top of the dress, not to paint my neck. This has to say that skin color. Just paint this part. Don't paint the neck above it, okay? So I'm going to use that same light blue, and I'm very carefully, without painting my neck, going to paint the top of my dress. Okay, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to neaten that up a little bit. Perfect. So I went back and I painted the top of my dress, my sleeves, my cape. And now the only thing that's going to be left to do with paint is my pupils. So that if you look at the eyes, everyone has black dots in their eyes. So we're going to grab a little bit of black, like a little bit, a little dot. Actually, you know what? I don't have my black paint. So what I'm going to do, I don't want you to do this, okay? I want you guys to use black paint. I guess I forgot to grab some, but that's okay. I'm going to color that circle in with my marker, but I want you to do it with black. Or you could always go back later and do it with marker. I just don't want you to accidentally touch any wet paint with marker because then your marker will be ruined. 
okay? So I'm coloring in, in this, like I said, this works better with paint, but I forgot to grab some. So I'm just doing it with marker, and then I'll show you what it looks like. Oh, the movie just finished. Okay. So you can either do this with marker or black paint. You're going to very carefully color in the circles in the middle of the blue. You don't want to cover the blue. Just color in the circles. And then we're going to get more white paint. Just a tiny bit. Okay. So when you're done doing the black dots, you're going to let them dry a little bit if you did them with paint. But if you color them in with marker like I did, they don't need to dry. Just don't touch anything with marker right now, okay? Only that if you want to. So the last part I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, and we're not going to use the, bris oh, the bristles. The part that we've been painting with, we're not using those. We're going to use the back of our brush, the wood or the plastic, whatever your brush is made out of. And we're going to dip that into some white. So I put a little bit of white on the back of my brush. And I made a little white dot right there on the black. Perfect. You see how cute that looks? So I use the back of my brush, not the bristles. The bristles are right here. I'm not using those. I'm using the end of my brush. I'm dipping it into white. And then I'm adding a white dot on the top of the black of the eyes. If you did your black with um, paint, let it dry for a little bit first, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let my paint dry for a few minutes. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom part of the dress. And a little bit of glue on my snowflake. And then I'm going to try putting some glitter on it, okay? And when that's all dry, I'm going to go back with my marker and I'm going to trace everything, and then I'm going to take a picture to show you guys, okay? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put my brush away. I'm going to say goodbye. <laughs>